with classical music as part of your life when you were a young boy? Um, definitely. My mother was uh, listening to a lot of like ballet music, Tchaikovsky, Stravinsky, Prokofiev, you know, all the famous ones. And uh, uh, she was a classical ballerina for many, many years. Uh, that's actually how she moved over to uh, Germany. She was originally born here in the US. And uh, she moved over to uh, start working at the Frankfurt Company and uh, met my dad, got married, three kids and one of them was me. Mm -hmm. So that leads to the question, I'm sure we could teach almost anybody to play the violin, but can you teach them to be a great artist on the violin? Um, I wouldn't even necessarily say you can teach everybody to play the violin. I think you have to have somehow a physical ability uh, to do it. You have to be able to, um, you know, first of all, play a lot of things, uh, memorize a lot of music, um, additionally, you have to be able to kind of learn technical stuff very quickly and uh, shouldn't have stage fright. That's, that's another thing which comes in handy if you're like calm on stage. So there are a lot of, lot of different aspects. And on top of that, of course, um, searching for, for, your own, uh, for your own voice on the violin is, is also something very, very important. But I think that comes later in, in the game, so to speak. I think the first thing which is very, very important during the first five to ten years is really to establish uh, a, you know, great intonation, great technique, uh, you know, just to master the instrument fully. And then afterwards, you know, it's of course up to your talent in order to kind of develop your own identity. So some of my young students or young crew might say, why is it important to listen to classical music? Um, why is it important to read a good book? Why is it important to... Uh, um, just enjoy the arts in general. I think it's something which balances your life out. Uh, I think music in general, good music, not only talking about classical, good music has, uh, if you play or listen to it, either way, uh, has a way of getting you away from, you know, your, your daily problems. Like for me, if I have a bad day, you know, bad relationship problems or my parents you know, piss me off or whatever. You know, problems with my teachers in school, you know. I, music was always something to kind of get me back centered and uh, basically uh, was my priority to kind of get my life back on the right direction. So why is classical music important? Because I think classical music is as much a part of, uh, you know, getting yourself centered as rock or pop. So I think it's, I'm just, uh, very, uh, for me, it's very important because it's a huge part of music as well. Well, you know, when I was watching a rehearsal, there were no handlers or managers or musicians telling you what to do. You were the man. You were the guy that knows it's working or not. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm in charge, so uh, I like it, I love it, but, you know, the downside is nobody's going to take the bullet for you. You're taking the bullet for yourself, and you better make sure that everybody knows and everybody knows what you want and kind of tell them careful, too fast, you're wrong chords, blah, blah, blah. Just be very, very aware of everything. But uh, I wouldn't want it any other way, because I think if I would give responsibility away, it, wasn't, wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be as good in the end. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but it's just, it's just the inner instinct to really um, either put more work into it by, by myself and, and really have a great result. Well, I think artists do that. They know what they want, and no matter what people yeah. tell them, they're going to do it. And I'm always, and I do have to say, you know, it's, it comes out differently if you give responsibilities away. Mm -hmm. And um, I just hear it exactly that way in my head on that day, and I, I just have to kind of be, uh, you know, telling people exactly what to do. So mm -hmm. it works mm -hmm. so far. Mm -hmm. And so who is a person that can criticize your work? Um, there's certainly, uh, I listen to everybody, even if somebody doesn't have much education, it's, it's always good to listen. Mm. If you kind of change your perspective is a different point, but it's very, very important to always have an open ear to people telling you if, if they like something or if they don't like something. Um, in the end, it's, it's up to you how much you filter and how much you pay attention to something, because there's definitely a lot of bullshit which people tell you and you you should be able to say, okay, thank you very much, but no thanks. But, um, 
you know, good comments can, can come from anybody. It doesn't have to be a great musician. Sometimes there's, there's certain kind of truth in, in, in what an audience member says when, when they come backstage and you kind of start thinking about it. That's why it's very important to be very objective with the comments you take. I mean, you have, it's, it's a tough one to pull off, but I try most of the time. Yeah, it's hard to know who to trust, yeah. I agree. Well, there are definitely certain key pr uh, people, um, like people I've been working with as a kid, who, who have been a great influence on my um, musical development. So if they would say something, it would definitely mean, mean something. I mean, I respect them a lot as musicians. If I play something for Ida Hendel and she says, well, you know, it's great how you do it, mm -hmm. but I do it a different way, it doesn't mean I have to change it. You know, she would never ever emphasize change something because you know you have your own thing. But you know, listen to what I'm doing, and maybe if it gives you a little bit of inspiration to see it in a different light, use it. And do you ever play for those people in a class situation ever now, or is it just they hear you in concert and they talk? No, I, I love to play for for uh, great musicians. Just chill out, and just play for them mm -hmm. a few, if you have a few minutes. You know. Never really just you know want them to hear me in the concert. You know, the most fun thing is if you if you play with you know great musicians. We do chamber music. It's really kind of you know there's it's a different story if you play you know the the crossover stuff where I, pretty much you ha I have to be in charge in order to make sure everything is right. But if you play trios or quartets, it's a different situation. It's a different kind of um, power balance because everybody is a great musician. Everybody wants to put something in there, and you have to listen to everybody. So there are different, different uh, situations when it comes to uh, making music. So there's the craft and discipline, yeah. but talk to me about the heart. When you're in a, a chamber orchestra or you're yeah. in a quartet, yeah. are there four hearts? Is there one heart? Is it um, there are four hearts at first, and then hopefully if, you, uh, if everybody starts listening and everybody has a certain understanding of when they're supposed to shine and when they're supposed to go back because chamber music is really about making the music work and making being being uh you know a great artist you know there are a lot of really good musicians or not, let's, let's say really good violinists or, or instrumentalists who can't play chamber music because they don't know when to kind of take themselves back mm -hmm. that's also an art form to really kind of let the music shine and not yourself mm -hmm. so that's very important in chamber music because I was watching all your very talented musicians yeah. work on that as well, yeah. and that seems like a whole nother uh, song or, or well, composition. Well, you know, the, the thing is that um, I like people putting their input in, especially because they know exactly how they can play and they know exactly their skills on the instrument. For me to kind of dictate every little thing uh, would not be the, the perfect result. So I like to give them a little bit of an idea what direction I, I want to go for, but I still give them the freedom to kind of show me what they can do with it. Especially when you have a, 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 like a formation of people who are actually used to playing jazz and used to kind of improvising. Who am I to kind of tell them exactly which note to play in which second? Mm -hmm. uh, of course, when you play with orchestra, it's a different story because they're used to kind of playing from sheet music. So you do have to kind of make sure they know what they're about to, to play. <laughs> so I'm always curious, speaking of orchestras, yeah. why, it's going to sound very naive, what yeah. role is the conductor? What role is the, the conductor is a negotiator between every party in the orchestra. And it's quite a huge responsibility if you do it right. Um, you have to set the tempo, which is very, very important. You have to make sure that the various orchestra members are listening to each other and are playing off each other, as I said it earlier. And you have to, of course, make sure, you know, basic stuff that all the notes are right, you know, but that's, uh, you know, with a good orchestra, that's not necessarily necessary. But um, I think the key part is really to kind of point out stuff which is written in the music, which people maybe are reading over or not aware of. Like dynamics is a huge thing with orchestra because uh, there's so many people involved, you really can't hear the whole picture when you play your own part. The conductor is there to kind of hear the whole picture and make sure if the violins don't really hear what's happening behind them in the brass, to kind of say, listen guys, you have to play up a little bit more. So like dynamics is, I think, one of the most important things as a conductor 
to really be listening to everybody at the same time and making sure that the balance is right. And that must be very interpretive, yes? Some one conductor oh, obviously, obviously one. every person has a different, mm -hmm. hopefully a different way of listening to music. So, uh, you know, that's, of course, you have to have a very strong opinion as a conductor, but I think every conductor has a different one. So I think it's, it's good to have those, um, you know, different characters. Well, you want strong opinions, yes? I think when it comes to conducting, you better have a strong mm -hmm. opinion, otherwise everybody does what they want to do. Mm -hmm. and when you have 120 people, it might turn out quite chaotic. It's all about them. <laughs> well, so when you're a guest violinist, what, yeah. what, is there a term for that when you're first violin? No. No, you're well, the soloist. I soloist, think, yeah. when you're the soloist. Yeah. Do you, is that ever a, a contentious relationship with a conductor because you think a piece of music should go a certain way and he um, thinks or she thinks another? Well, here's the situation. I think in an ideal case, you have two good musicians and they start working together, both of their idea. And uh, I mean, I've seen it in every possible way. I went to uh, conductors who were entirely saying yes to everything and didn't really bring much to the table, which was okay. I sometimes like actually more when people actually tell me, you know, this is good, but try this. You know, otherwise it's, you know, just playing the music like I want to do it and, mm -hmm. you know, it's fine, mm -hmm. but I like to have a little bit of, um, of you know, something, something new, you know. So, uh, but sometimes it's also the total opposite, which also is not really, really good. When the conductor comes and he's like, okay, doesn't really ask me for the tempo, just starts conducting away. And um, I, it really happened a few times and uh, horrible. It's really not a good, kind, not a good kind of situation because in the end you have to kind of then put your whole interpretation aside and just follow the conductor mm -hmm. and then the conductor is the one who's kind of have the, has the orchestra to follow and the soloist not making music in my, my, mm -hmm. uh, my universe. Mm -hmm. But when you're the soloist, aren't you the star? Like in the movie business, you don't really get the chance to tell yeah, the stars what to do. Yeah, but you know, the do. director still has, you know, the director can tell, you know, exactly the people what to do in the end. He is the man in charge, mm -hmm. even though I have probably, um, it, it looks probably like I have to, you know, more, more to say, but in the end he's in charge and, you know, I respect that order. Mm -hmm. So in the end, of course, I, I prefer when there's really a good dialogue between the conductor and the artist. And that kind of, that's how I feel what music is really about. Yeah, of course.